And now we're getting ready for our segment, Get Connected with Trisha Crane. Good morning. Uh, thanks for being with us. My name is Trisha Crane. I am your host today. We're going to talk with Ariel Smith um, about paying for college. This is the Get Connected segment on the Alabama Way, and I'm really thrilled to have Ariel here today because she's going to talk to us about how to get ready to pay for college and how to pay for college once you're there, and she's lived it, and so she speaks yes. to us from experience. So um, without further ado, um, we'll get started. So Ariel, again, thank you for being here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know that you, you've you lived it. You've it lived the experience. You recently graduated from college and are looking to um, start a master's program soon, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And as a Birmingham native, you've been here your whole life. You really know the lay of the land around here. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? So um, you're going to, I think what we're going to talk today and what I really appreciate your expertise with mm -hmm. is helping students look for while they're still in high school, you know, sometimes this gets overlooked, mm -hmm. while they're still in high school, look for scholarships. Oh, yeah. But then once you get there, there are more opportunities once Absolutely. you get to college. Yes. How do you find them? What do you need to be doing? So um, first, I'd really like to hear about your experience. You know, what, how, did you, how did you live it? Well, I think I did what a lot of high school students do, and that's basically you go through websites like FastWeb and Scholarships.com, and you set up the profile, and you're trying to figure out, okay, can I qualify for any of these? Mm -hmm. So you go through that Google search of scholarships for this, scholarships for that. And, you know, at first that was kind of frustrating because I was trying to find scholarships, and sometimes I would apply, and sometimes I wouldn't get them. Mm -hmm. And then I took that step a little further, and I talked to my college advisor. Now, some students, they may have a college advisor at their high school, or they may have a guidance counselor mm -hmm. at their schools, and sometimes they function in different ways, or they do the same thing. Okay. So for me, that was a big help by talking to her because she knew of different scholarships that were locally based, whether it was through mm -hmm. the Rotary Club or through different associations like the Elks Lodge or things like okay. that, that offered scholarships to me that I could apply for. Okay. So that was one step. Um, I started doing that right after my junior year. Mm -hmm. And if I would say any advice to anybody else, that would be to start much earlier. In fact, there are a lot of people that start doing scholarships when they're in middle school because you can actually start. That's right. That's a surprise. I did not know that. That's a surprise. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people say, oh, high school. But really, you can start practicing for your ACT, and you can True. also start doing your scholarship search while you're in middle school. Right. So that'll be the big tip is the earlier the better. Mm -hmm. But if you are in high school right now and you haven't done that, there's no need to fret about it because okay. you still have the time. Right. It's never too early, but it's still not too late. Great. So that's one thing. Okay. To do. So, and when we talk about resources and scholarships, there are a few different kinds of resources and scholarships, right? right? And and you've hit on a couple of them. Um, there are locally based scholarships, and there are national scholarships, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are need based scholarships when you, if you have a financial right. need, and then there are merit based scholarships based on your achievement level or. I would even, and, and then there are those scholarships where maybe you have to write an essay, right? Um, those were sort of hidden ones when my own children were in college. And those would, they could be 250 they could be $500, they could be $1,000, but it's a lot of money. And if you think about you're writing an essay and it could earn you $500, how much of us, how many of us get to write essays that earn us $500 in college money, right? So talk, if you could, Talk to us maybe a little bit about where, you know, merit based versus need based, because those are the two big categories. Well, you know, generally you touched on a need basis. You're talking about students that have a financial need. Okay. And in some situations, that's we're typically saying maybe under $60,000 a year is what okay. their family is making. Sometimes that can vary if they can, you know, prove it. But I like okay. to say $60,000 is typically that safe zone, so to speak. Um, and it doesn't hurt to have that merit relationship. And what I mean by that, I'm saying your GPA, your ACT score, mm -hmm. and your involvement. Because while they're definitely aiming those scholarships towards those who have that financial need, it doesn't hurt to have that solid GPA and that solid academic record mm -hmm. as well. 
And that you have to start working on in middle school too, right? <laughs> it's good <laughs> it's, to have it's, that. it's hard to catch up. It's not impossible, and it's certainly doable. And, and it doesn't have to be a 4.0, right? I think that's the biggest misconception. <clears throat> there have been scholarships that I won where I won the top prize, and they have different layers. Mm -hmm. So there are some scholarships, they say, okay, apply for this scholarship, but they don't tell you the amount. Okay. In some cases, what that happens excuse me, what happens is, mm -hmm. is that they have different awards they can give. Uh, there was one that I applied for, I received a thousand dollar scholarship, someone received 1,500, someone received okay. 2,000. So it really all depends in those situations. Um, what we don't talk a lot about in terms of need-based or merit-based scholarships is the fact that they can also be a one-time scholarship or they can be recurring scholarships. Good point. There's a difference, and it, and it matters. Yeah. yeah. We don't yeah. talk enough about how the money is paid out, and we don't talk about when the money is paid out. Okay. So I can give you a prime example, because I have a mixture of need-based scholarships. I had merit-based scholarships, mm -hmm. and I also had one-time scholarships and recurring scholarships. Wow. So during the fall of your freshman year, that's when you start seeing your scholarships come in. Okay. I had one scholarship that was for $1,000, and they sent that to my account in the fall just okay. for that semester. Okay. That was a one-time scholarship. They didn't offer it to me again. Okay. I also had another scholarship that was for a certain amount that was renewable all mm -hmm. four years. So I would get half of that money in the fall. Mm -hmm. I would get the other half in the spring as long as I sent my transcript to them to let them know I was still in good academic standing. Okay. And then as long as they saw that, the next fall, I mean the next spring, they would send in the other half of the money. Okay. Sent in my transcript again to make sure I'm in academic good standing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They send the money again that fall. And you can continue to do that for four years. Wow. Okay, but you have to keep up with it, right? I mean, it's, it's important. I mean, it's managing money, and which all of us have to do when we get out of college anyway, right? So it's kind of a first step at keeping track of where your money's coming from and where it's going. One of the things I want to clarify, too, because it's, um, I, I was even confused. My son, my uh, oldest son, had gotten a scholarship from the Basketball Booster Club, right? Uh, it was a, it was a, it was to me, it was yeah. a significant amount of money. But they sent it directly to the college, and uh, and so <clears throat> I think it's important for young people entering college that to know that this money first gets applied to your tuition yeah. and your room and board. It's not really like money in your pocket. Though right. some of them can offer a $1,500 stipend or something like that. And you that. know, that can <laughs> happen, and you bring up a good point, because I've seen a lot of students think, oh wow, this money is coming straight to my bank account. No, it's not coming to your personal bank account. Mm -hmm. It is going to the school for your tuition account, the mm -hmm. tuition that you offer, and that's another thing that we don't talk about, is there are some scholarships that can only be used for tuition and room right, and board. Right, so right. you have to really take that time to make sure that you're reading the criteria of how that money can be used and mm -hmm. why it needs to be allocated. Sometimes right. they'll say a book scholarship and you're going to use it towards your books. Or mm -hmm. sometimes it can just be through <coughs> anything and they're not really worried about it as long as you use it towards your schooling. So when okay. they apply it towards your account, it can go wherever it needs to be. Right. And the people at the college will make sure that it gets, it's not like you have to walk a check no, somewhere. No, I mean, that, they, they those, a lot of, of those mechanisms are sort of automatic and it's like one account and it goes here and it goes there. Um, so you do have to make sure, uh, I know some, some uh, young people can get into trouble with student loans that way where they, they have access to some of the money and they maybe buy a new computer with it or something, but maybe you didn't need that new computer because you're going to have to pay that money back one day. And student loans, we're not going there today. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're only going to talk about finding right. resources to, in, in a lot of different ways. Okay, we're going to take a break because you've given us some good information about um, where to find the resources and what the resources kind of are. When we come back, I want to talk briefly about the FAFSA, the Federal yes. Application for Student Aid, okay, and how important that is and that everybody needs to be filling out the FAFSA. Yes. And then we're going to move, we're going to talk a little bit more about high school relationships, those kind of relationships that you can be forming uh, to get you ready and, and help, it's, it's a network. It's really a network Absolutely. of people who can help you. And it doesn't, it's not hard, right? It's just not hard, you just have to do it. It's all about initiative. 
initiative. That's a good, that's a good place to stop. We're going to think about that. We'll be back in a few minutes. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Welcome back. Um, thanks for joining us here on the Alabama Way. This is the Get Connected segment. I'm Trisha Crane. I am the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection, which is a nonprofit news organization that where we cover uh, education news exclusively. So it's my pleasure today. Um, this is a really important part of education, which is that next step after high school if you choose to go to college, if you think that's a really good pathway for you, and an increasing number of students are, and college is expensive. So Ariel Smith has joined us today. Um, she's helping us understand how to pay for college and the things that you can do all the way back to middle school, which I didn't even <laughs> think about before, um, and on into college. So in the last segment, we, we took a break where we were about to talk about the FAFSA, the Federal Application for Student Aid. I think I've got the acronym right. Um, and, and sometimes people are a little worried about that. It feels, uh, it asks a lot of questions and it's a yeah. little daunting. What can you tell us about the FAFSA? Well, for start off, I benefited from the FAFSA all right. four years of college. Mm -hmm. And you know, the misconception is that you can only get it in high school or better yet, sometimes students only think about to apply for that senior year of high school. Mm. But you can really use that all four years and the amount that you can receive may vary. Like mm -hmm. perhaps at some point you may be able to qualify as your own independent, meaning that you are taking care of yourself and you're not using so much of mom and dad's resources to take care of you, okay. you can then use your tax information and if it's lower, then you're probably gonna receive more uh, money from the Pell Grant that way. Right. Uh, because that is, and forgive me for interrupting, no but problem. that is why the FAFSA is important because it, if, if you qualify, if your income levels and your tax information um, shows that you have a financial need, you are awarded um, money through the Pell Grant program and it is not, you don't have to pay it back. That's right. It's not a loan. It's an actual grant. Um, the government understands it's it's good to get kids in college, so they're giving you that uh, additional help to get into college. That's right. So, and sometimes it doesn't pay the full way. I think that it was about fifty six hundred dollars for a year. Um, this year we're looking at five thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars. Okay, but that's a lot of money. It is. That's helpful. In, and when it can you're in vary. College. It right. can vary. Some students, based off their income, they may receive two thousand or one thousand mm -hmm. or three thousand or they may receive the full amount. So it's on a scale based upon your personal information and what your parents put in, the persons who claim you right. as the dependent. The big thing about that is that if you are going to college, whether it's for a bachelor's degree or mm -hmm. for a master's degree, what mm -hmm. have you, there's no excuse for you not to apply for the FAFSA. Right. Because even if you're going to grad school, and I know we don't want to talk about loans, mm -hmm. but in order to get some of those loans, you have to apply using right. the FAFSA. Right. I did. That's how yeah. I went through graduate school. I applied for the FAFSA and I, and I used student loans. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to do it and the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. Like I know we said earlier that it's never too late, but honestly it's better in this case to go early. So okay. your, ta your tax forms normally come out in January and you mm -hmm. need your tax forms. You need to have them filed in order to complete the FAFSA. Right. So if you can get that done in January, the sooner the better. The priority deadline is March 1st. Mm. That does not mean that you won't get funds after March 1st. What that does mean is that if you put in your application before March 1st, you are now on their priority. So when the universities okay. are passing out the money, you're on the top of their list. Gotcha. If you put in your application after March 1st, now you're trying to run this gamlet of if I'm gonna get enough money based upon have they passed out all the money yet. Right, so you right. probably might get some money, but you may not get as much as you could have gotten. Okay. Like work like work study. Right. So when you file out the FAFSA, we talk about the Pell Grant a lot, but you're also eligible for work study, meaning that you have a job on campus mm -hmm. and that job is paying you money towards your tuition. And, and I think one of the misconceptions, because I talked about this with my own children, is the job is a job that is, it's typically working with the university right. in some 
fashion. And the people at the college, they understand that you have college obligations. And very flexible towards your work schedule. Exactly. And I think that's what, uh, you know, it's not like having to go get a retail job and you have this schedule and you, you know, it's, it, they're really, the, from what I understand, the colleges and universities are very helpful to let you, to make sure that that work study experience is going to work with your college and that you can make those grades and you can keep studying for those tests and get those papers in. So it's a great experience and it does help pay for your college. And you know, it's a great way to be connected. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. right. Okay, so that's the FAFSA. And one thing I was thinking about the FAFSA, um, because I know uh, in my own experience, oftentimes as the mom, I didn't get my taxes filed, right? So you can <laughs> still submit the FAFSA without filing your taxes and then when they when you actually get them filed they want you to go back and it's pull called the an adjustment okay so you can go in there and you can use your past year's tax information as a form of estimate so to okay. speak of where you might end up this year right but you do need to go back once you have filed your taxes mm -hmm. and put that correct information in right. so if you're in a situation like that the best thing to do is to go ahead and get that estimate done before March 1st exactly and then if you have a parent it's taking a little bit later. A little bit extra time. Yes. Right, right. Get that information in and make right. sure it's submitted so the university has that information. Right. The earlier the better on right. the FAFSA. That is one of those things. I mean, everything's better when you plan for it. Um, but with the FAFSA, there are some deadlines that are important. But there are also a lot of people that can help you with the FAFSA. Um, we talked with uh, Alabama Possible yes. at one point and they have a lot of help um, they and they work with schools to help get the counselors at the high schools um, to help you with the FAFSA so it's an important tool it can really give you the leverage to get into college but it's not just the FAFSA that's out there and that's what you had told us we were talking about while you're in high school um, there are a lot of different opportunities not just merit-based because a lot of the colleges will give scholarships if, you, if you're a high achiever, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a GPA and an ACT score of something, you get a certain amount of money. But that's not all there is either. So, you know, those might be primary sources, but then there's more. And we were talking briefly during the break about how parents, um, oftentimes, we don't know that there might be some scholarship opportunities connected to our work or our network. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I think a lot of times when we think about jobs and we think about benefits, we think about 401k, right. you know, paid leave, all that type of stuff. But a lot of times there's actually the opportunity to send your child to school or if you want to go back to school, right. that's an option. There's a lot of um, organizations I know we mentioned like Blue Cross Blue Shield mm -hmm. that has scholarship opportunities mm -hmm. for the uh, the dependence of the employers right. is there or maybe even for the employees we also have like organizations like Starbucks that was uh, help mm -hmm. you do like a tuition reimbursement I believe it's either right. for Arizona State or the University of Arizona and you can do it wow. whether in person or online so uh, think about it there's a lot of teenagers that work at Starbucks right. but do many of them know they could go to that university online and maybe if they want to go somewhere else later they can transfer those credits if exactly. they wanted to Wow. So it's really important that parents are asking those questions of, okay, are there scholarships available? Is there a tuition reimbursement plan out mm -hmm. there that my children can take advantage of? And sometimes the manager may not know. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to do your research, parents and students, mm -hmm. to see, okay, does my company offer this online on their main website? Okay. So you can take that information and say, hey, the website says this, Right. how do I get involved in those programs? Okay. I think that's the biggest start. And not only just with your employer, you can also look at different um, social and professional associations that you may be a part of or you may not be a part of. Okay. Um, some great benefactors here in Birmingham is the Shades Valley Rotary Club, right. um, the Kiwanis Clubs. They are very good at offering scholarships and some of those are renewable. I received okay. a scholarship from the Rotary Club that was a renewable scholarship, and I received a one-time scholarship from Kiwanis. Okay. I've also received scholarships from um, Greek organizations, and okay. I'm not 
uh, Greek affiliated in that capacity, mm -hmm. and neither is my family, but it is open to people whether you have a different ethnicity or you're mm -hmm. a different race or a different gender. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one particular organization that's a historically black Greek organization, mm -hmm. uh, it's a sorority, mm -hmm. but they also offer scholarships to men and to people who are not African American. Wow. It's, okay. Yeah, it's, it's really about your merit, your need base, and what you're mm -hmm. doing in the community and if you fulfill that need. Mm -hmm. And also, to to, don't forget that there are scholarships that have nothing to do with your merit and have nothing to do with your need base. There are scholarships for being left-handed. There are scholarships for being well, under 5'6". Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> My friend told me about there's a scholarship that if you can drive uh, backwards in a straight line for like 500 feet, they'll give you a scholarship for that. So oh, okay. it's all about looking and digging. Okay. All right. So, and, and we talked about that. We're going to take another break. We're gonna, when we come back, we're going to talk about, okay, so this is all leading up to college then you've got once you get there you've got to there, there are other resources it. right so um, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back Welcome back. Uh, my name is Trisha Crane. You've, uh, thanks for joining us here on the Alabama Way on the Get Connected segment. We're having a great discussion today with Ariel Smith, a Birmingham native who has, who has walked the walk, um, not just talked the talk, but she's helping us today with how uh, having lived the experience mm -hmm. of gathering up resources for college, right, financial resources, and getting into college and getting through. She graduated last year. Um, you know, getting through college and, and managing those financial obligations of college uh, in terms of tuition and room and board and those kinds of things. So right before we went to break, we had talked about um, the FAFSA. We had talked about uh, a lot of um, opportunities that people might not know about. Things right. like if you're, you know, through your mom and dad's employer or, or through a Greek organization, sororities and fraternities that might be able to um, offer you some scholarships, things that, you know, we just, you just don't know about them. You know, there's not really one website somewhere where you can, you can go. And I want to ask you before, you know, you mentioned earlier, um, initiative, right? right? It does take initiative. This stuff is not going to drop in your lap, no, right? It's not. And so, and, and sometimes people think it's hard, but it doesn't, I mean, how would you qualify that? How, what encouragement would you give um, to students who might be a little bit hesitant in, I don't know where to go, and I don't know, how do, do they, do they, <clears throat> excuse me, do they talk to the grown-ups? Do they talk to their counselors? We, well, how, what would you, advice would you give them? I would say don't limit them. Ask anybody, ask everybody. Okay. So, you know, ask the people that's in your high school, mm -hmm. uh, your guidance counselors, your teachers even. Mm -hmm. um, ask your parents what their jobs are offer. Okay. Um, and then if you have a, the schools that you really want to go to, mm -hmm. ask them what they have because mm -hmm. they're the university-wide scholarships, but then we also right. have departmental scholarships that are offered based upon your major and what department that you're in. Right. So being connected with that advisor at that university is a critical thing. The counselors and the admissions officers, because the admissions officers can tell you what's being offered at the university level, and that might be based upon your GPA, your mm -hmm. ACT requirements, so on and so forth. Um, but at the same time, your advisor can probably say, well, the business school offers this for this major, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the engineering school has this, or the African American Studies Department mm -hmm. offers this, or mm -hmm. chemistry offers that. Mm -hmm. So it's really all about asking people. You won't know what's out there until you ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, that, and that is, and it's, it's not hard. You can send an email these days. It's so easy, right, to just, but I think establishing those relationships, you shared with me your experience of how you actually met um, before you ever went to college. I think this is I unique, did. but I think, boy, I never thought about it. I mean, even my own days as an undergraduate student many years ago, I wouldn't have thought of it. Uh, and I know that there are advisors, but there are other people you can contact. Tell us that story. Well, you know, I, I go over the top sometimes. So I figured if anybody can answer my question, it's going to be the dean. I mean, he runs the school. Right. That was my thinking right. for that. Right. So I sent him an email. I introduced myself. I said, hey, I'm very interested in coming to UAB. I want to study this. My career goals are this. How can I get this done? Wow, and that's initiative, that's good. So he answered back mm -hmm. and he said, it's great hearing from you. Um, what day are you free? And 
The same day I had my tour at the university, that morning I was meeting with the dean, the assistant deans, and the advisors, wow. and all the people I really needed to know to really sit down with them for about an hour or so, ask them questions, and get feedback. And mm -hmm. that was how I started to get plugged in about different things that was happening okay. before I even came to campus my freshman year. Wow, and you found that they were willing to talk with you, right? I mean, I always say, you know, they're people too, right? They're interested in students, that's why they're at the universities and the colleges, right? Well, see, that's why we got to look at this as a relationship standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think so much pressure is on, I gotta get this school to like me, mm -hmm. but you gotta like the school too. So this is Good a relationship point. building moment. You want them to see you as a great candidate, as a great asset to the school. Likewise, you should see them as a great asset to your professional and career development. Right. So taking that step, showing that initiative, showing them, hey, what do you offer me? What mm -hmm. can you offer me? Mm -hmm. Whether it's by your major or by especially your financial packages, mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. be a great step. I've negotiated with schools before yeah. and saying, well, I'm looking at this other school because they're willing to give me a full ride. You're only right. offering X, Y, and Z. And right. in a lot of cases, what you will experience is that schools will be willing to pull different grants and scholarships to offer you a package. Okay. So don't always settle for what they're giving you. Right. Let them know, hey, someone else is giving me something better. Are you willing to step up or not? I like that, and, and, it's a, and it's an important skill when you get out of college, right? I mean, this is, I've always, I had told my children, you know, this is an opportunity to um, really build some of those skills that you're going to need as an adult when you get out into the real world. College is the real world, but then the real world, you know, comes again in, 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 after yeah. you graduate. Um, what can you tell us about, uh, that's, a, that's a great experience, by the way, I, I think in, you know, we know that you're unique. We know that you are you have a lot of initiative and you're going after things, but I think everybody can do this. This is not something that um, is beyond. Now, if you send an email to the dean and they don't meet with you, well, maybe that's a clue about the school, right? Uh, you know, and so you have to, I think one of the things, um, it, persevere, right? Persevere. If it's something you, anything you really want is worth working for. Yeah. And paying for college is not for the faint of heart. I mean, it is, it can be um, a bit stressful, but so is buying a house or renting an apartment or any of these things that you, you know, want to do in life. So this is just the first step. Once you get to college, this I thought was a, a great lesson. We, we talked right. about this a bit. Once you get to college, there are still opportunities for more money. It isn't as if you uh, arrive at college and then all your scholarship opportunities, you know, you, you can't get anything new. Tell us about that a bit. Well, it's all about getting plugged in onto campus, okay. you know, and that's basically what all this comes down into is okay. how connected are you willing to be to get this done. Uh, there's opportunities such as being an RA, a resident assistant, a resident right. advisor, right. where after your freshman year, you can apply to become one and you will live in the dorms for free. Mm -hmm. And you're basically that liaison between the residents of that dormitory, residence hall, right. and the leadership of that residence hall, making sure they have everything that they need, mm -hmm. um, handling any disputes or things like that you get the opportunity to stay on campus for free and mm -hmm. sometimes they cover your meal plan. So for a lot of cases, mm -hmm. that's a chunk of money right there. Mm -hmm. There's also being a tour guide, being uh, a part of different student organizations. I've mm -hmm. done that where they g given scholarships or maybe you're inducted into an honor society and they have scholarship opportunities there. Mm -hmm. So it's really about looking at how you can get involved in campus because sometimes okay. that involvement has a price tag that you can cash in on. Right, right. It leads to scholarship opportunities. Absolutely. One of the things that I thought was, um, uh, I had had a friend whose daughter had found a scholarship in her senior year of college that allowed her to do some travel. Um, and it was uh, like a memorial scholarship a, a woman had set up in, uh, for, her, for her brother, I think. And you said you had a similar experience. You were allowed, you, you, ha you found some money that helped you with your studies and allowed you to travel. 
Absolutely. Like I spent four months in China last year wow. and that was a scholarship that was actually offered by the Chinese government because they want to have more international students okay. study in China. Okay. And that was also covering my tuition and the dormitory and everything except the plane ticket and meals wow. there. And I learned that through a professor. So once again, mm -hmm. You know, studying abroad is not as expensive as we think. Sometimes it's actually cheaper to study abroad mm -hmm. as it is to pay the home tuition at the university. So okay. that's a thing that we got to dispel the myth there. Right. But then there's also uh, scholarships that are available just to do that. And we have scholarships that you can apply for. They're very competitive mm -hmm. that will allow you to cover everything while you're there or maybe mm -hmm. even send you to grad school overseas for free. Wow. And, you know, it, one of the things I've never been good at is, is taking rejection. <laughs> it's, it's a personal problem. But what's the worst they can say if you apply? They say no, right? And you don't, you never miss an opportunity that's for right. you. Right. As a life coach, that's things that I try to encourage to anybody I encounter, and I'm living mm -hmm. that right now. Mm -hmm. And a rejection is simply a redirection to where you're supposed to be. Exactly. And I'll remember that. Um, I really appreciate this. You have given us Gosh, a lot of information, um, and I don't know. I, it, you know, it's we could talk for hours about this. It's important. I think what I've heard you say is, you you do need to start caring for this yourself while you're still in high school. Absolutely. But even if you don't have great grades, even if you had a year that maybe something was going on and you weren't able to. Um, keep your grades up when you were in high school. There are a lot of opportunities to find scholarships. You do need to show some initiative, but enlist the help of the people around you, right? Build those relationships while you're in high school, and then before you get to campus, or at least when you get to campus in college, talk to professors, um, talk to your advisors, Talk to the people. Maybe you have a job while you're in college. Maybe you're doing work study. Hmm. They're just, you, but you have to ask the question because you never know until yeah. you ask the question. And ask some of your friends too. Right. Ask your friends. And and if we work together, it's we're gonna get there, right? Right. And you are living proof of it. I, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this conversation, Ariel. This is a. Um, you know, the future of the world is in our young people's hands, right? <laughs> and so it's just exciting to see that you're, um, you know, out pursuing and you, you said you're doing work as a life coach. Yes. I think that's really important um, to help people. You know, it's, Absolutely. It, it's important to help each other, I yeah. think. And that's why I like doing this segment. Uh, I like being able to share information with people. So tell me this, how can people get in touch with you or where could they find you? Do you have any um, we talked a little bit about LinkedIn. I think you said you were on LinkedIn. Yes. Uh, you just type in my name, Ariel Smith, or any of the key related words like UAB or Vanderbilt. I'll be there in the fall. I'll come up cool. right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can also follow me on Instagram at I am Ariel underscore Smith. And okay. I promise I'll follow back. And my LLC is Primetime Movement. So if you follow Primetime Movement, I'll okay. follow back as well. That's excellent. Okay, so because I think people might want to talk with you. Um, you've brought us a great message today, and I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Ariel. Thank you. Thanks for being with us today.